Next we're going to go on to two pipe thermostats. Note that the two pipe thermostat has two air connections. One is the main air supply without a restrictor and the other is the output air going to the control device. The two pipe thermostat can deliver 400 skims. This type of controller can drive larger valves and dampers with much faster response times. Wes? The um, word skims just mentioned um, represent a measure of air volume. In previous slide, we discussed a 0 .007 diameter restrictor. A 0 .007 restrictor delivers 40 skims. So simply stated, you can see that 40 versus 400 skims of a two-pipe thermostat makes it up to 10 times more effective. And it is the type of thermostat that's most com commonly used today in most applications. Next slide. Okay, here are some of the different features of a two-pipe thermostat. Um, we have an adjustable output, which is meant on the right side. We have the set point dial cam. We have a test port. In this test port, you can either unscrew and screw a particular type of gauge in there, or it has a little rubber insert that you can insert a needle in. This gives you the output pressure. We have the bimetal element and lid, the control port, and then we have the sensitivity slider. Um, all these things are used to change the different functions that you need or to adjust to your particular application, and they must be calibrated for your application. Wes? Calibrating uh, thermostats across all the manufacturer involves certain common things. The first thing would be to set the throttling range. Typically, in an application of a room thermostat, we set these throttling ranges between 3 and 4 degrees. Secondly, we'd insert a test needle to the test port of the thermostat, and that would be connected to a simple inch and a half, 30 pound gauge. This test port that we're looking at, that's the pressure between the thermostat and the final control device being the valve or uh, damper. Next, you would turn the set point knob to whatever the ambient temperature is where the thermostat is located. Typically, we use 70 degrees as a reference. Next, turn the calibration screw to decrease that output pressure to zero PSI. You then turn the exact same set screw in the opposite direction to increase it to eight PSI, and you leave it at eight PSI. Next, you would manipulate the set point dial from 68 degrees to 72 degrees. That's two degrees above and two degrees below the ambient temperature. On your gauge that's still inserted in the thermostat, you would be able to observe the branch pressure move from a low of three pounds to a high of 13 pounds. A proper field calibration would also include observing the final control device, the damper or the valve, and you should see that with the action on the thermostat stroke from full open to full closed. I just issue a note of caution here that manipulating the set point simulates a temperature change in the opposite direction. For example, a direct acting thermostat raising the set point from 70 to 72 will cause a drop in the branch line pressure because raising the set point simulates a temperature fall, not a temperature rise. If you're confused at all about this, you can what I call breathe heavy and closely on the bimetal or use artificial heat like a handheld hair dryer to simulate an ambient temperature rise. And you can observe the output pressure action on your test gauge. Use the same method if you're unsure if you've got a direct or reverse acting thermostat and the resultant pressure would tell you whether it's working in a direct or reverse action on temperature rise. Next. No, the first picture showed you a single control temperature thermostat. This is a dual thermostat. This controls at two different temperatures. The thermostat operates at 15 pounds, typically for a daytime setting. Um, and then at night, the supply pressure is converted to 20 pounds, which switches the thing internally to the second bimetal strip. 
These are adjusted for different pressures. Typically a daytime thermostat in the northern climate would be set for 68 to 70 degrees, and at nighttime it would be set for, let's say, 58 to 60 degrees, usually a 10 degree difference. And there's so you have two different adjustments here. This shows a single dial dual thermostat, and typically what you would do is you would try to uh, have 15 pounds in, adjust the thermostat for the daytime setting with a dial set to what you, the actual temperature is at the time. And then if you wanted a 10 degree shift down, you would turn the dial 10 degrees, switch the supply pressure to the 20 pound setting, and adjust the second to, uh, screw for the uh, pr same output pressure. Wes will probably have additional comments on this. Well, the opportunity you have here is to recognize a dual element thermostat when you see one. With the above unit, it uh, represents a thermostat, which will, in the case of heating, allow a hotter, comfortable daytime setting of, say, 70 degrees, and an energy-saving lower nighttime set point of, say, 60 degrees. Each element is calibrated separately. The day-night changeover is accomplished by alternating the main line or supply pressure. And as mentioned with Johnson controls, uh, this is delivered or switched between 15 and 20 pounds mainline pressure. In this case, it switches and actually makes the changeover between the midpoint of the 15 and the 20, or 17 and a half pounds. Note that different manufacturers use different mainline pressures to switch. For example, Honeywell uses 13 and 18 pounds. Siemens uses 18 and 25 pounds. So for this reason, it is difficult to substitute an alternate manufacturer because the switchover occurs at different mainline pressures. Also note on this thermostat that there's a, uh, a push button to restore day setting. So for example, in a school during nighttime or weekend class, the instructor would be able to push the button and switch from the 60 degree set point to the 70 degree daytime setting without touching the actual set point dial and without manipulating the uh, mainline pressure. So that acts as an override to the nighttime setting. Next slide. We're going to show you now a second type of two temperature controlled thermostat. This is a dead band controller. Typically, a winter-summer thermostat and the dead band thermostat both are used on systems that provide heating and cooling. The winter and summer stat provides heating or cooling function for you that has one valve supplied with either hot or cold water. The dead band thermostat provides heating and cooling function on a piece of equipment that has both heating and cooling functions available at the same time. In the above example, uh, the thermostat is controlling a normally open heating valve with a 3 to 6 psi spring range and a normally closed cooling valve with a 9 to 13 psi spring range. On an increase in temperatures, the sequence will cause the heating valve to throttle down and finally close. There will be a dead band between the 6 psi closing point of the heating valve and the 9 psi opening of the cooling valve. This sequence can be controlled by a direct acting single function thermostat. The drawback of controlling with a single function stat is that the dead band between heating and cooling would be very limited. The dead band thermostat has two bimetals, both with the same action. There are two separate set point dials to select the heating and cooling set points. Wes? The definition of dead bands is the difference between the temperature where the heating stops and the cooling begins. 